you all see we have a lot of mulch around here. Mulch, specifically oak mulch, we find to be the key to growing in Florida. Our climax species, our pioneer species through the central region of Florida had been oak. That means, you know, that bacteria, that fungus is already present to break that down. We're getting a lot of this mulch, you know, from local tree services. Unfortunately, you know, we're in a little bit more of a rural area. So we actually, you know, we have to go out to find the mulch and haul it in. But probably for most of you all being in more of an urban setting, you know, this is a waste product. This is something that, you know, these companies actually have to put pay, you know, to go and get rid of. So, you know, I look at it as, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. You know, you guys need to contact these people if you're looking to develop a system like this and you want to get your hands on some hardwood oak mulch. It's really important that you're getting the, the trees, the leaves, the twigs, you know, all of that ground up together. Typical mulch, like if you go to one of our box stores, 90% of the time is cypress or pine bark. You know, this was not a cypress swamp. Cypress never grew here. You know, bacteria for cypress isn't going to be present to start breaking that stuff down. Typical bag mulch is pure carbon. You know, when you're getting those leaves, those twigs, and that wood, you're getting that nitrogen carbon ratio. It's really helping to break down. So we keep all of our mulch piles in the understory. We spray them with compost tea almost twice a month. We do not turn them. They just really start to naturally. In equivalency is equivalent to chicken manure pound for pound. I'm growing pu pure poop here. This is fertilizer, guys. You guys know how much a bag of fertilizer is, right? I mean, 30 bucks, 40 bucks for an Omri approved organic fertilizer. We can grow our fertilizer. We don't need to buy that stuff. These grow very easily here. This tree isn't a heavy feeder. It's not something that I would typically, you know, do a lot of chop and drop on because it's sitting right here around the corner. I'm going to use this as a demonstration piece. But typically speaking, you know, this is my fertilizer. I would not get down on my knees. Usually I just drop it in like a triangle around the tree. Now, if I just drop, I, I try never to get it on the base of the tree either. You don't want to fill up around the base and cause collar rot. So that's pure nitrogen. You know, that was like two pounds of nitrogen that I just put there. Then what I do, I try to grow, like I said, the clumping grasses in relation with the Cthonia diversifolia, which is the Mexican sunflower. This is super high in nitrogen. This is super high in carbon. One thing I want to warn y'all about before I start cutting this, the Thakahatchee grass is very sharp. I don't know if you guys saw my kid running around here, he has some scratches on his face. It will cut you up. It can actually blind you if it touches your eye. You should have sunglasses on when you prune this plant. So I'm gonna prune this real quick just to show you guys what we do with it. So I just pruned this plant too, five weeks ago. You can see the old cuts down here. So this is all new growth that's on top of this. So just like I said with the mulch earlier, how we want the leaves, we want the twigs, we want that carbon nitrogen ratio, I want the same thing with my ground covers. So I put this, you know, pure nitrogen down on the ground and the sun's just gonna bake it to nothing. I take this carbon, I get that carbon nitrogen ratio, it's gonna slow down the breaking breakdown process. It's gonna shield it from the sun. It's gonna make like a slow release fertilizer. It's really gonna slow down that breakdown process just by shielding it a little bit. Well, thank you, Steve. You're welcome. So that's how we chop and drop. We feel that really extends that length of that Mexican sunflower. You know, it really, using it on things like bananas and papayas, any of your heavy fruit, fruit trees. I mean, we're growing our fertilizer here. You know, we, we, don't, we don't bring in any external fertilizers whatsoever, unfortunately. I use some organic fertilizers and pots and stuff in the back because it's kind of hard to get the Mexican sunflower in the pots, but that's really the only places.